Good morning, brothers and sisters. It's currently 5.28 a.m. Lisa here from Glass Darkly Ministries. I was woken up out of sleep sometime around 4 a.m. And the Lord has put this on my heart to make this video right now because I can't let this go. He wants it out. He wants this information out there. So... I woke up, like I said, from sleep. I, I was miserable. I couldn't sleep. And all of a sudden, I remembered the scene from The Goonies where Chunk almost gets his fingers cut off in a blender by the Fratelli brothers. Okay? So then I was led to Google what he said at that moment because I remembered he started speaking something in Hebrew. It was like some sort of like Yiddish chant or something. And that scene came to my mind with what he was saying. So I wanted to know what it was that he said in that moment because it was in Hebrew. And so I Googled what did Chunk say in that scene. And then this popped up. And notice that it's from a Hebrew magazine. It's in purple. It says, Chunk remembers Jewish movie moment number 42, which happens to be 42 months, which is half of tribulation. And here's what he said on March 11th, 2010. Do you see that big sign in the sky? Guys, I can't make this stuff up. Do you see that big sign in the sky? Guys. We see that big sign in the sky. We see the big sign in the sky. Now listen, it says, uh, it says Gravis Mushnik in French. I can see it all now. We are in the poorhouse. Okay, so that's what the actor said who played Chunk in that, for the, uh, talking about that scene, or at least talking about his time on the Goonies. I'm not sure, but anyway, that's what popped up when I Googled what did Chunk say in that moment. Then immediately, the song Loopy Brown by my favorite band, who is also called The Fratellis, a Scottish band that I have been listening to since the 90s. They're my favorite band of all time. I know, like, a lot of their lyrics. So this song popped into my head, Loopy Brown. Guys, remember the Holy Spirit brings all things to our remembrance. He teaches us all things. So look at the lyrics to Loopy Brown. Well, just slow down, come on, Lupe Brown. Tell Desdemona that I'm ready to leave. Well, she's nothing much to look at and she's hard to believe. Well, don't go down. Throw your arms around every little psycho. Every little psycho that you happen to see Well, you meant everything to them, but you meant nothing to me Okay, tell Desdemona Then I remembered that Patrick mentioned Desdemona in his la in one of his last videos There's a asteroid or something called Desdemona in the cluster up there with Virgo with child So then I'm like, okay, well, who's Desdemona? So I would Google who's Desdemona. And Desdemona is a character in William Shakespeare's play, Othello. It says, Shakespeare's Desdemona is a Venetian beauty who enrages and disappoints her father, a Venetian senator, when she elopes with Othello, a Moorish Venetian military prodigy. Military prodigy. Oh my gosh, guys. When I posted about this just a few minutes ago on my community wall, I didn't have all the information, and that's why God wanted me to put this video out, because there was more to it. See, she represents the adulteress, a military prodigy. That's the Antichrist, guys. When her husband is deployed to Cyprus in the service of the Republic of Venice, Desdemona accompanies him. There, her husband is manipulated by his ensign Lago into believing she is an adulteress. And in the last act, 
she is murdered by her estranged spouse. It says, the role has attracted notable actresses through the centuries and has the distinction of being the first role performed professionally by Margaret Hughes, the first actress to appear on the English public stage. Then it says, Othello has its source in the 1565 tale Un Capitano Moro in Glee Hecatomitith. I don't know if I'm saying that right. Hecatomitith. I don't know. By Giovanni Bastista Giraldi Cynthio. While no English translation in Cynthio was available in print during Shakespeare's lifetime, it is possible that Shakespeare knew both the Italian original Gabriel Chapuis, 1584, French. Okay, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to fast forward a little bit. Okay, then it says down below, the only named character in Cynthia's story is Desdemona. The name derives from Greek, which means ill-fated or unfortunate. It says, Othello views his wife, calling her an ill-starred wench. Guys, she's the adulteress. Desdemona in the star cluster represents the people that are going to get left behind. Listen, the Holy Spirit then led me to Revelation 2, 21 through 23. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. And I will kill her children with death, and all the churches shall know that I am he which searches the reins and hearts, and I will give unto every one of you according to your works. This is it, guys. This is it. It's time to go home. It's really here. You can't deny this. If you don't know Jesus, right now, it is time for you to repent. And what that means, in Greek, it's metanoia. You need to change your mind about how you see things. You need a savior. We all need a Savior, and that Savior is Jesus Christ. We cannot save ourselves. Every single one of us is a sinner. We all fall short of the glory of God. When you repent, you see things differently. You see Jesus for what he did and how he loved you so much. He spread his blood for you. He shed his blood for you. In these last moments, all we have are these last moments. Turn your mind around and put your whole heart, soul, and mind on Jesus Christ and what he did for you. Without his atoning blood garment you will die it's time to get to know Jesus he is almost here he has revealed it to his servants it's time to go I love you all. I will see you all in the clouds very, very soon.